Welcome to this little video of highlights of the visit of our Uzbek artists this week. I'll, I'll sit in front of my camera for those of you for a minute who are joining us on uh, Zoom. I'm Ricky Quintana. I'm going to now switch and stand up for the people in the room. This is the first time we've done a hybrid event, so uh, if we have a little tech weirdness, <laughs> I hope you'll forgive us. Sorry. Um, they're, they, yes, they're, they're new. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ricky Quintana, the founder of Cunard's Fair Trade. I want to welcome you to this a wonderful event with Aziz Murtaziya. He is the leader of Mani Khat um, Ikat Weaving in Margulan, Uzbekistan. Assalamualaikum. Uh, I'm very well. Nice to greet you all. My name is Aziz, as you can know with you. And I can be from Sanja. He's a good uh, emergency master sitting on the back and supporting me. <laughs> So, with the guys on the online, I'm also going to be meeting you both. So, uh, today actually we want in a couple hours to try to explain you about Uzbek Ikat, uh, which we say in Uzbek language is Abarbandi. So, we're going to talk more about Abarbandi uh, with specific details. And Okay, uh, so, you already know that Uzbekistan is in Central Asia and this is one of the oldest countries in that area, which was on the Great Silk Road. And the Great Silk Road was one of the big influences in Central Asia in terms of culture, economy, and uh, different influences by, uh, from west to east and from east to west. And when we say about Ikats, there are different legends how it came to Central Asia. Uh, because all around the world, there are many communities, many countries who are doing Ikats. Back in um, East Asia, like China, Japan, Indonesia, Malaysia, India, even in Europe, they do in France, in, still nowadays they do in Mallorca, in Spain, they do in African countries, in Egypt, in Mali, they do in Latin America, like in Colombia, in Mexico, in Peru. So that means the textile and the e living is very common craft in form human being, but for Central Asia, Uzbek ikats they are very different from other ikats in terms of colors, vibrant colors, in terms of complexity of uh, the patterns and designs. So today uh, I'm going to explain you how we actually do the ikats. So the main city for ikat making nowadays is Magellan or we say in Uzbek language, Magdalon, uh, based uh, to two centuries back, uh, when Magdalon was uh, founded as a city, and it was a big city for uh, great scholars, merchants on the Great Silk Road, and also craftspeople in different spheres. And till now, the main uh, occupation of Magellan people is crafts. Uh, we have over 200,000 people in Magellan, and majority of them, almost 50%, they are involved in crafts. So, during the Soviet time, maybe you heard about that, nothing was allowed to do in private. So, everything was done only by government and belonged to government. That's why any person who was doing it in private, they were either jailed in prison for many years or they were just taken all the workshops and destroyed. And so during the Soviet time they were established few these kind of workshops. It starts of course with the silk that has to be cleaned and spun and bundled together in hundreds of threads turned into skeins and then creating bundles 
for the actual dying process. of operator error, I missed the camera capturing this scale model that Aziz brought of bundles wrapped with the plastic thread they use today. It turned out both Aziz and Sanjar are wonderful cooks and we went shopping and bought the ingredients and they cooked the Uzbek national dish of plov, a rice pilaf made with meat and carrots and onions and spices at our house and we enjoyed a true Uzbek feast. We took Sanjar and Aziz up the Sandia Peak tramway and they had a lovely time uh, photographing the gorgeous views from the top of our local mountain. Uh, we took a hike out to what's known as the Kiwanis Cabin and took more photos uh, to remember their trip to the mountains. There's a shot of the Kiwanis Cabin. Aziz and Sanjar especially appreciated the mountain trip because they don't have high mountains like this in Uzbekistan. My time with Sanjar and Aziz ended with a visit to the Santa Fe International Folk Art Market where I did 
some shopping for myself. I also bought a few items for Hoonarts, visited the booths. and said goodbye to Aziz and Sanjar and this journey of East meets West. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this little adventure. Mm -hmm.